Um, at, you know, at some point, I guess Sun chose to withdraw from the applet market and focus more on the back end side of it. Uh, did anybody eventually realize that was a mistake? And uh, or well, I guess in the first place, whose idea was that? And then second, uh, did somebody along the way realize it was a mistake and then decide to go back into it with things like Java FX? Um, it wasn't so much that we withdrew from it. Um, you know, it, it was it was sort of a combination of things. Um, one was that you know we got involved in all this litigation with Microsoft and the in the the antitrust suits, and that made doing desktop stuff really really hard. And since they controlled you know the desktop that was used by you know almost everyone, you know that made life really really hard. And at the same time, all the enterprise stuff was really was really taking off. So we, you know, put put most of our resources on the stuff that we could make a difference on, which was the enterprise stuff. You know, you know three Microsoft course, court cases later, all of which we won, um, and then you know let the wounds heal, and da 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 da, and then then like. Oh, desktop stuff. Yeah, it's you know, it's time to go back. So that's what Java FX is an attempt to do. Yeah. Well, and all the work we've done in Swing and Java 2D and and the rest of it all makes those bits and pieces just really fly. Okay. And uh, and the Java Store, I guess, is a way to provide uh, uh, startup developers a way to monetize what they produce, right? Yeah. And and it's a really really big market. You know. You know, I mean, there there are a number of app stores that that deal with, um, you know, some of the cell phone carriers. But you know, I mean, just just on desktops alone, you know, we we've got a total available market of about eight hundred million, and then you add the the cell phone world, and you know, one of the, one of the areas that I think is is really interesting is like in our. Uh, keynote yesterday, we 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 demoed the a set top box that integrated in with the television that ran you know full up uh, the, the the full Java set top box standard. Most of the cable TV set top boxes outside of the U.S. are Java machines. You can run Java applications on them and do all kinds of weird things. Uh, there's a whole new generation of them that has. Uh, open GLES accelerators and uh, the the TV that from, from LG it had this sort of dual core MIPS processor um, MIP, MIPS that's uh, that's kind of old isn't it no the, the 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 MIPS the MIPS processors are in a surprising amount of, of embedded stuff they're they're a you know pretty solid. Um, you know, it's a it's a it's a pretty solid embedded architecture. It's yeah, it it's it's not used for desktop computers, but you know you crack open an awful lot of consumer electronic stuff, you'll find MIPS machines in them. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> About uh, for for startup people, I, I guess that's those are uh, kind of the people I'm uh, targeting with this. Uh, what uh, what what's the most satisfying thing about seeing something like Java become a real uh, uh, distributed project? And and uh, what what's the most satisfying aspect of what it's become today? I'm just just seeing what people do with it. Um, you know, people doing the most surprising things you know from you know you know Neil Young's car which is I don't know if you've gone and looked at Neil Young's car but it's just the link vault right the link vault it's just it's just crazy you know in a in a really beautiful kind of way and um, you know you ride the London ride the London underground Right, and, you know, you get the get your little little uh, oyster card, which is the, the 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 pass to the London Underground. 
it's a Java card. The turnstile readers, you know, bags of Java code behind it all. Um, you know, you can't ride the tube in the London Underground without using a Java app, and most people don't know it. And it's just like, well, I wouldn't have thought it would get places like that. And then you think, oh, I, you know, I wrote that. Well, I didn't actually write any of the code that's in there, but I sure sure had a, had a had a part in starting, you know, you know, you know planting some seeds really early on. Cool. cool. Uh, what what's the most uh, frustrating aspect of how uh, successful it's become, either in terms of uh, needing to keep backwards compatibility or, or internationalization or other issues like that? Um. Yeah, backwards compatibility is really, you know, a difficult thing. Um, you know, we get real religious about backwards compatibility, like no matter how awful it is. Um, you know, and, you know, so we've got somewhere around 6 million professional developers that use Java as a regular part of their daily lives. And, you know, if you... You know, take even something as pessimistic as the mythical man month number of th you know three lines per day. Um, you know it's you know three million. No, sorry, um, six million developers doing three lines a day, eighteen million lines a day. Aggregate, you do that for three years. That's about a thousand days. Um, so, so it's, it's a really big number. You're up to like 18 billion lines of code. Um, I don't know what you do with 18 billion lines of code, you know, and, and, you know, if, if we break stuff, when it's that much code, you just don't, just, it, it doesn't matter how obscure it is, something somewhere will get affected. Yeah, so it's a it's a big deal. Internationalization is that a big deal too, or or is that not as difficult? Well, it's, it's a big deal, but it's nowhere near as difficult. And I mean, it's more more of a pleasure than a pain. Right. Yeah, because you get to make it available to more people that way. Yeah, and you know, in in ways that they can actually understand and can go down into you know deeper and deeper things. I mean, you go to places like like India where. You know, they've you know built all kinds of really interesting apps that, you know, unless you could deal with their local scripts, you know, or you know, Java is really a big deal in Japan, and you know, if we didn't have internationalization support, it wouldn't work. Right. Yeah. 